In this overview, I will describe how MuleSoft's AnyPoint platform can be used to call the BizTalk rules engine. In this particular walkthrough, we're going to have a consuming application that would like to perform a credit check on a particular customer request. This scenario is well suited for using a business rules engine as there is different logic involved in performing this credit check that can change frequently. When the credit check logic does require modification, we do not have to redeploy a lot of different components, just a set of business rules. A rules engine provides a separation of concerns that allows an ESB to focus on what ESBs are good at, connectivity and routing. The flow of our solution is a consuming application will reach out to Mule ESB via an HTTP request. Mule ESB in turn will call a native .NET method via the .NET connector which was released in July 2014. This connector allows developers to call .NET assemblies that have been written in any .NET language. The BizTalk rules engine does expose an API that allows .NET applications or assemblies to call it. When you do call this API, you pass in a typed XML document that will then be evaluated by the BizTalk rules engine. And in this case, we're going to have a series of five different rules that will evaluate the type of customer group that the customer belongs to and also the amount of credit that they're requesting. We will then evaluate these different thresholds and determine whether or not credit will be extended back to the customer. After we've gone ahead and called the rules engine, we will send this information back down to Mule and the ESP platform and then back out the HTTP inbound endpoint. Before jumping into the demo, let's briefly take a look at the BizTalk Rules Engine Composer. So here I've got a policy called creditcheck.policy where I have five different rules. So the first rule is going to check to see what group the customer belongs to. So in this case, it's looking for Salesforce customer group equal to A and credit requested must be less than or equal to $50,000. If both of these conditions are satisfied, credit will be approved. Similarly, in customer group B, we'll want to ensure that the credit requested is less than or equal to $40,000. If these, if both of this criteria is satisfied, we will set is credit approved to true. Otherwise, it'll be set to false and they will not be approved for that amount of credit. The other three rules follow the same sort of pattern with customer group C having $30,000 or less of credit available, group D having $20,000 or less available to them, and lastly, group E having less than or equal to $10,000 worth of credit. For this demo, I'm going to use Fiddler as my consuming application. Now Fiddler, its role is simply to provide an HTTP request to the Mule HTTP inbound endpoint and provide the customer group and the amount of credit requested. Now in this case, I am going to use a post and I'm going to provide some JSON, which represents our group and the amount of credit requested. So in this case, we are going to indicate that our group is A and that the credit requested is $1,500. If we go ahead and execute this, we can now take a look at the response. We see that we have an HTTP status code of 200 being returned, and we can see that is credit approved is set to true, and this is because we've got customer group A with a credit request of $1,500, which is less than what we saw in our rules composer. So if we go back and check at customer group A, we can see that as long as the credit requested is less than $50,000, we will have our credit approved. So let's now go back and create another request. And this time what we'll do is we'll set the credit requested to be $250,000. Now let's go ahead and run this again. And we can see that our credit has not been approved because we've exceeded our threshold for the amount of credit available to our particular customer group. I'm now in AnyPoint Studio where I've got my flow that's going to go ahead and call the BizTalk rules engine. So I have an inbound HTTP endpoint which is going to be listing on port 8081 with a path of credit check. 
And as I showed you earlier, we're passing in a JSON message. So here I'm able to use the data mapper to transform this inbound JSON message into an XML document. And the reason why we're using XML here is that the BizTalk rules engine is expecting an XML document to be passed into, into it so that it can evaluate that XML document and provide it an updated instance of that document back after all of the rules have been executed. Now as we exit the data mapper, we're going to have a byte array. So we're simply going to use a message transformer to take that byte array and turn it into a string. We have a simple log point here where we're just logging the payload. If we go back to our console, we will see that here is in fact the XML that is being logged after we've exited the data mapper. We now want to set a content type property of text slash XML when we pass the XML document into the .NET connector. Now the reason for this is that we can explicitly set the content type so that the .NET connector knows how to deal with the particular payload. The .NET connector supports processing JSON messages, XML messages, and byte arrays, and by us explicitly setting this content type, we're able to receive an XML document within our .NET method, which I'll show you shortly. From a .NET connector perspective, we're going to go ahead and configure our .NET assembly and also provide the assembly type, the scope, and whether or not we want to provide full trust to the assembly. After we've configured those global properties, we also want to provide the name of the method that we want to call. So let's now flip over to Visual Studio where we can walk through all of the .NET code. So here's Visual Studio 2013. As I mentioned, we have a get credit check XML method where we are going to receive an XML document called credit request. Our response type is going to be of type XML document as well. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to leverage the BizTalk rules engine API. And here's our reference to that particular assembly. Now, this, is, this assembly is available for use by any .NET application, provided you have the appropriate BizTalk licensing in place. And once you've added the reference to this, you're able to indicate the policy that you want to execute. You would pass in the XML document. You would then get the response back. And in this case, I want to return a generic XML document as opposed to a type XML document. So I'm simply going to do a conversion here before providing the XML document response back to the calling mule application. Now, if we want to debug this, we also have that capability, and we can do so by attaching our debugger. In this case, we're going to attach it to our, our Java process, which is going to be launching our .NET CLR. And if we go back to Fiddler and provide another request, what will happen is we will jump right into the Visual Studio debugger. Once we are in the debugger, we have the ability to step through all of our code, add watches, and perform any other operations that are associated to debugging a .NET application. And that concludes our demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough on how MuleSoft's AnyPoint platform is able to plug into .NET-based rules engines, including the Microsoft BizTalk rules engine.